Hello, I'm George Hayes, and welcome to our fourth tutorial in this series on OpenGL 3.3 and above. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to be adding an object loader to the mesh, and I'll show you how to export the mesh for this object loader that I've created. Um, we'll also be covering the de uh, GL depth test call face and back, show you where they belong, uh, how to add uniforms as far as uh, to update as far as like your shader and then as far as um, we're also going to cover perspective and ortho view and model transformation basics we won't be covering anything like light or anything like that in this here and as you can see this is an object I currently have loaded up I created in Blender for this tutorial and we'll go ahead and show you this stuff here from now All right, All right let's go ahead and jump into mesh here and we've gone ahead and added this object loader dot uh, h in here which is a file that you can get from my project which is probably the best thing for you to do if you're following this video is go ahead and download it and follow along with the actual project added in so you can see what's going on we won't really be going over this this could be done as a separate tutorial if I get enough requests for it it's very basic object loader it loads triangle based objects only single component objects and nerds it can only be like made of one, one part where you can have actually uh, object files that actually have multiple parts to them where this one only builds shows something that's a single part all right and so in here we've changed the void load the to just opening as far as the file name which drops it down into here and this is what we do we create an object loader call it A in this case we drop the file name into it and it gets us basically everything we want and there's it can do the UVs normals and stuff like that so you just select the ones you want and pass the values in that you want to have filled up as far as in this way all right and so obviously get vertices, textures, normals, and the scenes. And if I wanted to do the normal, I would do like this a dot get normal and then pass in whatever value I wanted filled. Alright, let's see. So I don't have to rebuild this. There we go. Alright. So that's the only change as far as in the actual object loader is in the load function. And now if we go over to sdlogl.h, um, we're not using quaternions in here. I believe I have it in the file. It's because I was doing testing on another part of this. But what you do need to make sure is added in here is these five lines here. We create a 4x4 matrix for projection matrix, view matrix, model matrix, and then your MVP, which is model view projection, and then a counter, which is used for dealing with the rotation angles. All right, and then we come over here, and this is where we actually are going to initialize the depth testing. All right, here, and here we have as far as GL call face. Um, and then it sits there and tells us which face we choose which face we want we could call the front face and it would actually look a little different here if, um, we've seen it with what the back face calling looks like now if we go and take this I believe we can do and we'll save it real quick rebuild And when we run it, let's see if it's doing it. Yeah, it's doing it. We're looking through the object to the opposite surface is what's going on, as you can see. All right. So we'll go ahead and get back out of that, put that on back again. build okay 
Well, let's see if I can do something real quick. I can bring up Blender. Sorry, should have had this up already. My apologies for this. Alright, this is the ship that I exported as far as and used for the game. And when I exported it, I came down here and I used export and then wave object right there and then set it to triangle faces and write normals and then name it and use your export after you set it to whichever folder you wanted and that's as simple as it is all right so we're back out of that okay um, back to the initialize here we're going to go ahead and uh, have a wh for width and height of our window uh, counter we initialize to zero we set width and height by grabbing it from the window size here all right then setting a location for where we want to position our camera all right then we're going to create a, our perspective I set it to 70 degrees view perspective and if we jump into here uh, that's how wide this angle is you know, as far as on here all right the left to your left to right angle as far as I remember correctly all right and of course you can have a Z near Z far your forward direction your up vector and it's called the view frustum and your camera position all right and of course you it's when we I'll get back to this part, but we're going to want to do the model transformation. We're transforming your coordinates from local coordinates to world coordinates, and you'll be placing your camera in world coordinates. All right, so back over to here. All right, so at this point, this is where we put the width and the height in, and that gives us a fraction so we can determine as far as what the height your width is compared to your height as far as on your screen your Z near and Z far you don't want to set this too small if you do it'll put all your um, I think um, level of detail is, or accuracy up into the front of it and you end up dealing with a lot of Z fighting and stuff like this and of course you also don't want this number here too large either and so you can play around with it and get what works for you and that's as simple as that gets okay well what we've seen so far with me running this has been as far as with the perspective view I'm going to show you the ortho view here take this out put this one in and ortho we just use ortho it get you if your left your right your top your bottom of your screen all right then z near z far and I'm going to go ahead and picture on ortho all right so ortho it's if you look at looked at your x and y axis all right your y's run like this your x run like this so you're going to set your whatever size you want your minus x axis to be on here your positive x axis to be here then your top and your bottom right so that's going to be your y so you can be like plus one minus one whatever and then this you're not gonna have to worry so much about because it's gonna always be in that direction and your view frustrum is straight like this so any object out here or here are the same size because it doesn't change perspective on it all right so there's no change in comparison to how much viewing area you are you put it at so if you put it at uh, your object out at 50 or you put it at 10 is going to look the same size. Okay. And then, of course, your Z near and Z far on it. So, we built. I'm going to run it. And as you can see, the ship is much larger like this. All right. Where before it's smaller, but that's the reason is it's because the ship's in a larger area. Now, if we want to reduce the size of the ship, 
There's two ways to do it is you're going to either have to change the scaling or you're going to have to change these. So if we change this to 10, 10, 10, and 10, and rebuild. That should give us a smaller ship as far as into the screen light like down. All right. And regardless how far out we move it, it's going to still be the same distance, or how far back we move the camera, it'll still be the same size. So we'll go ahead and exit out of that. Go back to our perspective view. Rebuild. Okay. Now we're going to set our, as far as our view matrix, as far as setting our camera. All right. You put in your camera location, then you camera location plus the view direction or you know, what you want forward to be all right that's going to go here all right and then your up vector goes here as far as in this one all right and that sets the direction and angle your camera setting that and so forth like that all right now we're going to set our basic model matrix as far as to one just initialize it to that and then we'll create our MVP which is model view projection matrix by multiplying model matrix times view matrix times projection and yes they have to be in this order if you reverse it or move them around it will definitely change the way things come out all right and it's up to you you can play with that you want to see what type of differences you get all right so we're going to jump out of that go over to on loop and right here is where we're actually creating our transformation matrix and updating it and so forth like that we're going to set our skill up here to one uh, we're rotating on both the x and y axis we're set at our position to 10 all right the first translator position as far as using glm translate scale uh, we use for scale fairly simple and GLM rotate and we're X axis Y axis Z axis multiply them together and then multiply them to get your rotation matrix then first we're going to scale our object then rotate our object then posi uh, set our position and you're doing it in this order again intentionally because if you move them out of position or scale after you've rotated and so forth you can either end it with the object rotating around you or with you know it rotating out at a larger distance expanding the size of the object and so on you feel free to play with it as you want and see what it does again we recreate the uh, model view projection matrix here all right because this is done every time as far as in the loop and we increment our counter for our rotation up here and then we pass it into our shader here through MVP to update our shader for it and then we bind our shader and draw we call it a triangle it's actually our ship we can name this anything and then draw alright okay so on the shader the different changes we have we've gone through and added uh, this line here to let, give us a number of uniforms alright so right now we're using one uniform and we've created a array of one uniform All right. in the shader here you pass you create look for your uniform ID uh, for its location after you have bound the shaders to the program because it has to get the information from the program as to where they are and if they're not bound to it then it can't get that information all right so get, this is the name of it and it's passing the ID their location out to this unit here okay and so that's what that is then when you come down here for our update, we simply are use, passing MVP in and using GLM uniform matrix for MV, FV. You, there's all sorts of different ones for this. If you look them up, um, G, just type, start typing in GL uniform and search it on Go, uh, Google or the 
GL, open GL site and you can find information out as far as the shading language and stuff like that but uh, passing that value as far as in here and actual address of what we want to for the data to be passed in here this is we don't want it um, changed or in, flipped over and this is we're just passing in the one value all right so I believe that is it I had to redo this video because in the last one time I read I did it I ended up leaving out the depth test as far as on it so hope you all liked the video hope you find it informative and please like share and feel free to visit the site uh, grhmedia.com and download files and so forth and all the information should be down below as well and let's see if there's anything at all I've forgotten no it doesn't appear so I uh, appreciate it thank you very much for again watching have a nice day